السلام علیکم ناظرین آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں پروگرام زاویہ ایم ایم فائیو نیوز پر میں نام فہد ہے ناظرین جیسا کہ آپ جانتے ہیں کہ مے سکس کو برطانیہ بھر میں الیکشنز ہو رہے ہیں اس میں لنڈن میئر کے الیکشنز ہو رہے ہیں لوکل کاؤنسلس کے الیکشنز ہو رہے ہیں اس کے ساتھ ساتھ اسکاٹش پارلیمنٹ اور ویلش پارلیمنٹ کے بھی جو ہے وہ الیکشنز ہو رہے ہیں ناظرین ایم ایم فائیو نیوز کی یہ کوشش رہی ہے کہ ان دا رن اپ ٹو دا مے سکس الیکشنز آپ کی ملاقات کرائی جائے ہماری یہ جو کانورسیشنز ہیں ڈفرنٹ پالیٹیشنس کے ساتھ آج وی آر آنرڈ ٹو ہیو میئر رخسانہ فیاض ود اس او بی دا first directly elected female mayor of Newham. Thank you so much, Roxana, for joining us today. How is the election campaign going? Um, it's going well. I mean, as you would imagine, it's a very different type of local election campaign from previous years and what we're used to because we're having to be very mindful about COVID-19 uh, and the ongoing risks uh, that that presents to our communities, particularly here in Newham, where Uh, for a period of time last year, uh, once the pandemic uh, sort of commenced here in the UK, we were very much at the highest levels here in England with regards to mortality case rate. Um, mm-hmm. So we're having to be careful, but, you know, the team, the Le- Newham Labour team here uh, in the borough is very much uh, doing as much as it can in a very safe way Mm -hmm. to advocate for our Labour candidates for both the Mayor of London election, so Sadiq Khan, if you're a Labour supporter, even if you're not, please vote Sadiq, if I'm allowed to say that. Apologies, Fard. Mm -hmm. Um, But also we have our representatives for uh, the Greater London Assembly, um, which is located in City Hall and presently City Hall is by Tower Bridge uh, near the centre of London, but it's going to be moving here to Newham later in the year. So we have two candidates from the local area that are standing to be elected, uh, Umesh Desai, who's presently as an Assembly member, and also a Cabinet member of mine, uh, James Beckles, who's looking at, at being selected as an Assembly member for uh, next Thursday's election. So it's a frenzy of campaigning as well as getting on with the job and the privilege of being the mayor of Newham. Okay. So Ruxana, t- tell us, uh, obviously you became a councillor in 2014 and then you became the first directly elected female mayor of Newham in 2018. Um, but, but tell us a little bit about your journey into politics, like what inspired you, you to get into electoral po- politics, running for office, Um, and what sort of drove that decision? So, um, you know, there's always been an overlay of political consciousness, as far back as I can remember, were grew up in a very politicized or politically conscious or aware household. My parents uh, are actually from Pakistan, and my father arrived here in the UK in the early 1960s, uh, soon followed by my mother. And as I was growing up, there was lots of conversation about the ongoing situation in the Indian subcontinent, having, uh, you know, uh, achieved independence through partition, uh, the issues of how those nascent uh, infant countries were emerging and trying to stabilize and, you know, the consequent impact around you know the uh, various stages of conflict um, and what was happening with regards to the Pakistan nation state and uh, the various issues pertaining to good governance and so it was very much a conversation that my mother and father would have around the kitchen table as I was growing up and it just Uh, laid in me a sense that politics was important and also growing up in 1970s uh, England as a child uh, you know it was a very very hostile environment in uh, a different albeit similar way to some of the hostile environment issues that we're still grappling and contending with and campaigning against So my parents, uh, as being, uh, you know, members of that first generation of immigrants that came from 
Pakistan and the wider Indian subcontinent very much experienced racism and that is something that has informed my politics. Mm -hmm. So my journey has always had an overlay of anti-racism work, campaigning for social justice, as much informed also by my faith, you know, having been brought up in a Muslim household and you know, uh, being a Muslim myself, you know, what is instilled in you around social justice and making sure that you're helping the needy and the vulnerable and contributing to society. So all those things, you know, mixing together very much, um, you know, informed my thinking, my politics, and it's just carried on ever since. And you know, I was uh, approached to become a councillor back in 2014, and I was a representative for a local area in Newham called Custom House, which is amongst the depri most deprived here in this borough. And, you know, it very much solidified my thinking around the need to uh, undertake a moral crusade against poverty and inequality because the depths of deprivation were so acute and it baffled and upset me that I was here uh, a Labour councillor, a uh, part of a Labour administration, yet I didn't feel and didn't believe that enough was being done to tackle, tackle poverty and inequality, particularly as it was experienced by ethnic minority communities here in the borough. We have the largest number of ethnic minorities here in Newham, 78% of our resident population is from you know, the ethnic minority communities, we have 240 languages, dialects spoken, we literally have a connection to every single part of the world. And yet, we have those communities or from when the from those communities, significant levels of poverty, income inequality, bad housing, and that just didn't feel right to me. So I felt compelled to uh, put myself forward um, and stand up uh, in challenge against my predecessor and I feel very privileged that the local Labour Party membership endorsed uh, my candidature to become the official Labour Party representative for the Mayor of Newham and then subsequently the endorsement of the Newham population. I think I achieved 73% of all the votes cast uh, back in May 2018, and I am currently serving a four-year term. You're right, I'm the first female directly elected mayor in London, uh, but I'm also the first female directly elected mayor of colour uh, anywhere in the country, here in the UK, but also in Europe. So it's uh, a real privilege, and I feel that I am providing a role model opportunity for many other women, but also uh, young men from the diaspora that I come from, but also all young people of colour, because we need role models to look up to, to aspire. And I've always, uh, you know, looked up to other leading figures from the ethnic minority communities and their uh, giants whose shoulders I stand on because they encouraged me even at a distance you know you should always try to strive to be your best uh, ensure that you demonstrate your contribution and giving back to humanity and that you're part of a global movement to try to you know create a better world for everyone. Absolutely. And, and obviously, you've, you've broken quite a few uh, glass ceiling yourselves. Um, looking back at your career, obviously, uh, got elected as a councillor in 2014 and a mayor since 2018. What would you say the, the highs and lows have been when you look back at your career in, in politics? Uh, it's really hard to say. I mean, you know, at every single step of this journey so far, there have been many exhilarating moments from being involved in the Stephen Lawrence family justice campaign at the time I was working for a national anti-racist movement and you know the family needed to support to galvanize it into a national campaign that required absolutely the attention of the national media and of national government and you know, meeting through that process and many others, some incredible people. So Dr. Richard Stone, a uh, doctor of note who used to work in West London, 
uh, very familiar and very much at the front line of uh, the experience of the black community uh, in that part of London. So that would have been the Notting Hill area, you know, became a mentor. He was an advisor uh, on the Stephen Lawrence um, uh, examination or inquiry led by Lord Macpherson. And, you know, meeting individuals such as Dr. Richard Stone and many, many others informed my uh, thinking about what the requirements of a leader uh, need to be. And they taught me uh, the importance of humility, of authenticity, of integrity, and of ensuring that you have a moral compass very much anchored in everything that you do when you step into public life. It mm -hmm. is really important in this age where too many people feel let down and disappointed and disillusioned with politics and politicians, mm -hmm. uh, that we develop a new generation of politicians that absolutely are focused in delivering for people. And that's what I feel particularly proud of, mm -hmm. uh, that I've had the benefit of meeting some really incredible people who have maintained in me the focus on that moral compass and integrity in public life. Mm -hmm. And 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 we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the upcoming election for May 6th. Obviously, you mentioned uh, Sadiq Khan's up for, for re-election. And then we've got, you know, in terms of Labour Party, we've got Anna Sarver uh, leading uh, the Labour Party in Scotland. So what would you say Labour's message is? Obviously, with Sadiq Khan, all the polls are are suggesting that, you know, he, he will um, hopefully comfortably win uh, a, a second term. But when we look at Labour's performance generally in, in the polling that is coming out, you know, despite Conservatives being in power for the last uh, good part of 11 years, Labour still trailing behind quite a lot. So what would you say Labour's message is for 6th of May and what, what should people be thinking about? Simply put, Labour's message to this country is a message of hope against the backdrop of the devastation that has been caused by the most serious public health crisis that has faced this country, but also humanity globally. We have a situation here in London uh, where the economic impact of COVID-19 will be significant and huge for thousands and thousands of Londoners. And if you love London, vote for London by voting for Sadiq Khan. And please do not be complacent there is no guarantee the, you know, it's a shoo-in for the Labour candidate, Sadiq Khan. He's brilliant, he's amazing, he will advocate for Londoners, and he has been absolutely on point in his advocacy for London uh, in the face of a Tory government that has systematically stripped London of the revenue and the income that it needs to serve Londoners. So, for example, in the midst of a pandemic last year, the government announced that it was going to remove funding so that young people no longer were in receipt of free travel passes. That's because they claimed the Transport for London needed to reshore its financial position. COVID-19 clearly had an impact, as it has had on all sections of the economy. It had an impact on transport, travel, on the London underground, because people were required, due and through the lockdown phases, to stay at home. The transport network in London is the only major transport network anywhere in the world that does not receive central government funding. All of it has to be generated through ticket sales. Yet we have some of the most deprived communities in London. We have within those deprived communities, young people growing up with the challenge of even being able to eat a healthy meal. And the government against that context was trying to remove free passes for them. And Sadiq stood up for young Londoners. So I would say an appeal to all of your listeners, or sorry, should I say viewers, 
the when you are in, you know considering uh, next Thursday, uh, consider the future of London. It's the importance of its recovery and the message that Sadiq and Labour in London are providing because Sadiq works with all the local authorities and the leaders of the local authorities I work with him very closely. Our approach to COVID-19 has been absolutely on point to reduce the risk of community transmission, but there's a huge amount that we've got to do as part of the recovery for London. And we need to make sure that at the heart of that recovery, issues of inequality that have been laid bare because of COVID-19, both health inequality, but economic inequality, for example, in Newham, we have the highest number of furlough workers anywhere in London. That points to a real vulnerability and fragility of our, low, of our economy here in the capital, which doesn't provide secure uh, lay, uh, work and employment opportunities. These mm. are things that the Labour Party, both uh, here in Newham, uh, under my administration, uh, across London, under the administration during his first term as the mayor of London, Sadiq, and as part of his proposition to Londoners to secure his first term. Mm -hmm. You know, we're offering a radical alternative to what's been driven uh, since 2010 under the Tories, which has been a reduction and a fragility that has led to in state and community a time when we need to keep an eye out for and look after each other. Mm -hmm. and, and finally, uh, Ruxana, what would your message be for, for young people who are um, not too involved in politics? They maybe watch politicians on TV, they follow a bit of news, but you know they, they never thought about getting involved in politics. What would you say to people watching from the sides and particularly young people and people of color and minorities who, you know, who, who've never thought about getting involved in the political landscape in their communities and cities. So how, how can they get involved and what would your message be for them? I would absolutely encourage every single young person watching this program, please do at whatever scale, small scale, in your neighborhood, in your borough, join an interest group, advocate and speak out for those that are voiceless because it is a real privilege to be uh, providing your time, your energy in the pursuit of making the world better and in public service. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Ruxana. Nazreen, you are watching Mayor Ruxana Fayaz, OBE, who is New Hampshire Mayor. We were talking about May 6th, about the about the elections next Thursday. MM5 News is on the coverage of elections. You are watching MM5 News.